Welcome to another Walters Works check-in. Hi everyone! In today's video, I'll be showing you how I repair scratches and nicks in my 3D prints with the same resin used to print them. The advantage of using resin, opposed to something like 5-minute epoxy, is you can thicken it to the right consistency for easier application. In this bird head print, I had some pitting left over by the supports, as well as some scratches from where I was a little heavy-handed with my X-Acto blade. For this lower beak part, there's a large crack going down the center from when I tried to drill it. The crack is pretty obvious, and it makes the part structurally weak. This last model is a hippopotamus that I scratched with some metal tools to see if I could add some texture after the print was finished. Here are the materials you're going to need for this project. The same resin used to print your models, some popsicle sticks, a paper clamp that's been thoroughly tested to make sure it's springy, a small container with a lid, in my case I'm using a dram cup, and the secret ingredient, cabosyl fumed silica. I picked this up from Amazon, and as the description suggests, I'll be using this to thicken my resin paste. A strong word of caution here, this is for chemical thickening, not food thickening. Health code number one denotes it as a possible irritant. This is basically powdered glass, so you don't want to ingest it or inhale it. Speaking of safety, make sure you're wearing a good chemical mask and a pair of gloves. You'll still want to rinse off any remaining residue from your prints after this, so make sure you have either some water or some alcohol handy, depending upon the resin you're using. I'll be using the water washable resin from Elegoo, so I'll clean the parts in a tub of water. I'll begin by adding a small amount of resin to this cup. Always make sure your resin's well mixed before using. Unthickened resin is kind of runny, with a consistency similar to Elmer's glue. That's not ideal if you want it to stay in place on a vertical surface. Next I'm going to add a few scoops of the cabosil in about a 1 to 1 ratio by volume. The cabosil is lightweight and travels through the air easily. Remember that mask I told you to wear? It's not optional when working with this particular product. To combine the materials, I'll be using a popsicle stick. Well, maybe not this particular popsicle stick, because obviously it's been working out and I haven't, but it's friend over here, who prefers to sit on the couch and watch Netflix. No judgment. Stir this mixture together until it's completely combined. You shouldn't see any clumps and it should be smooth like peanut butter. If it's still thin, go ahead and add a little bit more cabosil. After a moment of mixing, you should be rewarded with a velvety smooth resin paste ready to be applied to your 3D models. If you won't be using the paste right away, make sure you store it in a dark space because if it's exposed to sunlight, it will start to cure. I'll be applying my paste with a small artist brush. You could also use a popsicle stick or a spatula if you're covering large areas. When applying the patch, make sure to cover the entire area you wish to fill, and it's okay if it's a little bit thick in places because you can always remove that later on by scraping or sanding. You can use the paste to re-sculpt whole areas, but don't go too thick because this will still need to be cured later on, and if you have an area that's a little too thick, it might not cure all the way through. For the hippo, I wanted to see if I could sculpt in some texture with this paste. I begin by brushing a small amount onto the back to smooth out the scratches that I had left previously. Then I add a larger dollop and come back with a stipple sponge. I tap the sponge gently into the surface to leave a slight texture. The beak is going to use a bit more TLC to cover up this large crack. I'm going to make a simple clamp using these two popsicle sticks and this binder clip. Yep, still springy. Put one end of the two popsicle sticks into the binder clip and then pry open the other side. Then I can put my print between the two popsicle sticks. The pressure is firm enough to hold the two sides of the crack together, but not too strong so I don't run the risk of making that crack even larger. With the beak secured, I can now turn my attention to repairing the crack. You'll get a stronger repair if you can patch the upper and the underside when possible.
And now with all the patches made, it's time to send the prints to the UV curing station. The cure time will depend on the strength of your UV lamp and the thickness of your patch job. These repairs were allowed to cure for about a half hour. An easy way to check for a complete cure is to take a popsicle stick or a toothpick and rub over your repaired area. A well cured repair won't show any new scratches from the soft wood. When your patch is fully cured, it's a good idea to give them a quick rinse in your recommended cleaner to remove any remaining resin residues. You can remove any excess resin patch with an X-Acto blade. Just be careful not to add any additional damage. If the area is large enough, you could also use sandpaper. Just be sure to finish your sanding with a high grit like 600. It also helps to add a little water when sanding for an extra smooth finish. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like it in the future. Until next time, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye!